Hello, um, my name is uh, Joshua and welcome back to Inside the Music, or welcome to Inside the Music if this is your first time. Um, so welcome back, uh, it's lesson two now, it's very exciting. Uh, the first lesson we went over the kind of basics of um, the tenor horn, the E-flat tenor horn, and we just spent a little bit of time going over different kind of aspects of it. So that was like, we, we went over holding the instrument. We also went over the mouthpiece. We went over the valves. And we just kind of went over the overall instrument. And today, we're going to take one of those and we're going to spend today's lesson focusing on it and kind of, you know, understanding it, discussing it, and maybe just kind of providing some almost um, relevance to maybe how my experience could maybe help you out a bit and that's kind of my goal for today and today's one today's lesson as I should say is going to be looking over the mouthpiece so got mine right here and I've obviously got the tenor horn because we're going to be using it today and we've got my team brass book again from uh, Richard Duckett and I definitely recommend using that book or getting the book for yourself if you are looking to practice with the tenor horn it's a perfect book it's got everything you need and can't can't give it enough um you know praise for how useful the book is it's it's been really useful for me so that's why i'm using it to to show use what you can kind of do with the tenor horn and whatnot so what we're going to do today and um, there's going to be a number of things we're going to look over a few and I'm just going to explain what they are. So, the first topic today will be discussing the mouthpiece. Now, with the mouthpiece, we're going to be going over um, the different kind of techniques that we've used. We're going to go over how um, uh, it's used with the instrument and then, you know, just explain what it's for and why it's important. Secondly, we're going to go and use the Team Brass books. We're going to be um, kind of like this is going to be like part one, so we're going to use one page of the book, uh, and that page will be going over kind of like the buzzing um, of like your lips. So we're going to be looking over the technique, uh, why we create the technique, why it's used, maybe how it's used, and why it's important. And we're going to spend a little bit of time practicing it, and I'm going to provide loads of demonstrations with the mouthpiece and try and explain as best I can. Uh, how to do it. It is quite a complicated thing to explain. It's very difficult, so it's something that you want to practice as well. And obviously, you can come revisit this. Um, and finally, for the third one, we're going to be part two of Team Brass Book. We're going to look at the tech light. So, we're going to be looking at some almost like little diagrams, and we're going to explain different ways of playing your notes on the instrument. And we're going to, it's going to then show the mouthpiece off it's going to like show the skills that we just learned from like well, you know we're understanding buzzing learning that and then it's going to let us understand some ways to play the notes on the tenor horn and those things that um, we use the different playing tact styles for example can make all the difference with the instruments so I'm looking forward to showing that off and maybe providing just a little example and I'll maybe provide a couple of notes and their names and their uh, valve positions as well. And um, there will be a small bit of theory today, just going over like it, the diagrams have some photos in them uh, of notes or you know values. So um, I want to go over that just a little bit today uh, because next lesson is going to be theory. Uh, we're going to go over theory and we're going to go over the different elements within theory and this, those kind of skills that we learn will allow us to understand what's in the book because some of the things maybe not come across just yet if you've not done music before some of you may have, which is great um, uh, and maybe some of you do know but just need a reminder so that's what this kind of whole section the, the little, little theory bits that I'll be going over today. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, get straight into things then. So, part one, the mouthpiece. What is the mouthpiece? So obviously, 
it looks like a duck call, almost. You can almost say it sounds like a duck call. <laughs> if you want. Um, it's quite small, actually. It's not, it's not huge, but it's obviously it's to fit with the instrument. But such a little thing can make, like, really great sounds on the instrument. It's amazing. It's amazing how um, the instrument works. So the mouthpiece... What is it? So we've just said it's something that is used with the tenor horn, which is here. And as you can see, there's something missing with it. And it's this little bit here. That's where the mouthpiece gets um, put in. Gets put in and then you're ready to go. And this allows you to create a sound with the instrument. This is the bell. And this is where the sound comes up from the instrument. So the air travels through, goes through each thing, comes out the instrument, creating as a musical sound and the mouthpiece is very important for that and it also works very well together with the valves because the valves allow you to create different notes but playing through the mouthpiece allows you to create those notes with the valves so for example i'm going to play a c which is open i'm going to play a g which is also open then i'm going to play an f which is first valve and if you want to jot those down, you can. So C and G are both open. So zero valves, no valve. And F is first valve. And if I play it really quickly with the mouthpiece. And there you are. So you can hear a really nice sound with the mouthpiece and the valves together creates a really nice sound and it's really nice. So that's what the mouthpiece is for and it and it's so important as part of the instrument because without the mouthpiece you wouldn't be able to create those kind of amazing sounds and you wouldn't be able to maybe use dynamics for example to create like an atmospheric piece because you know you, you hear film music all the time that has brass and obviously with a, with a, a mouthpiece it's very difficult to play the instrument of course. So that's the importance of the mouthpiece. Um, there's not really anything else to say with it. Um, obviously, it's a small mouthpiece. It's not too large. Um, fits in the instrument. And it kind of just sits like so. Just so you can see both sides. Like that. And then like that. And don't worry. Um, we're going to be going over the buzzing of the mouthpiece now. So this is now kind of part two. And we're going to spend the next kind of couple parts, it's going to be much more in depth, we're going to spend a lot more time understanding it, explaining it, and just getting more comfortable with it. And I'm going to explain how it looks, how it sounds, what I do, and then it kind of allows you to practice it and maybe revisit these um, sections in the video and be able to kind of re repeat them over and over again if you're just trying to get used to something. So, I'm going to grab the book because um, we've got a diagram and hopefully you can see it. So we've got the book here. This is the page we're going to be working on just now. So it's the getting started. And this is just for uh, me to introduce you to the buzzing of the lips. I showed it in the first lesson, but today we're going to get a proper look at it. I'm going to show the diagram off and then I'm going to try and replicate the diagram as best I can and also maybe explain the kind of what you're seeing in the diagram and how that creates the sound and why it's important. So, if I turn it here, you can see here that we have got, um, obviously it's just someone creating the sound, and this is, it says buzz, like it says buzzing with the lips, um, and uh, that sound is obviously created, as you can see, if I bring it a little bit closer, you can see here, um, it's almost like the lips are being pushed together and you can almost, it's almost like a wee smile, but it's not. And then obviously when they push, it creates the sound. And we'll go over what this symbol is. It is a note and it's got a name and a value, but we're going to go over that shortly. And then as you can then see, it's then applied again, but with the mouthpiece and it creates the same sound. So how is this sound created? As you can see there, it was almost like, um, you could see the lips were almost kind of like that. And you could almost see they were pushed down together like so. Mm -hmm. So just like that. And then what you're going to do is you're then going to almost... 
you're gonna go like it's almost like a two 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 it's like a Obviously, you can see I've got enough air, so but what you're going to do is you're going to buzz them together. So buzz those two lips together with plenty of air and there you go. So buzzing the top and bottom lip together creates that kind of like that wah, 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 wah sound or like the ta, ta, ta sound. And... Um, and obviously, that will come with practice, of course, so do not worry if you cannot get it on your first go. It does take a while. It's a lot of practice. That's the most challenging part of starting with the tenor horn is getting that technique down. So if you don't get it, do not worry. You can come back again. You can watch me do it. You can see how it's done, and you can just re repeat it. Now, something else now to add to that. So obviously, you heard the sound. You heard the lips buzzing. You could kind of see how it looked. So, like that. So you can see, you can see the cheeks are like that, my lips are like that. But then you can also relax them a bit and still go. So once you kind of get more comfortable with it, you can kind of relax it a bit. Obviously, when you first do it, it's going to, you're going to feel it because it's new and you've never done it before. And yeah, it's it can be a bit straining sometimes. So make sure to take breaks. Don't do it too much to the point where it's going to hurt you and it's just going to be frustrating as well. So make sure to take breaks. Maybe, you know, you can always go read a book or play a game or something and come back and practice it. And you can practice it whilst you're playing the game might be a bit random if you're playing with people and you start going <laughs> they might be like what you're doing but there's a way of practicing it so that's kind of a way of doing it the thing i want to introduce now a part of it is obviously you heard the kind of spacing so you heard almost heard the ta 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 and obviously you can hear me going ta ta i'm using my tongue to separate that ta sound so i'm just gonna go ta or ta 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 Ta. I'm using my tongue to separate the ta's so that they've all got their own name and their own value. And that's what your tongue is used for when you're buzzing with your lips. So obviously, doing the technique, that's great. But then if you then do it again while separating the notes with your tongue, you get... almost hear that and that's the separation that's the that's like that's what's called tongue and notes so when you tongue a note it's separating them together so it's, you can always if you hold a sound if you hear if you it's almost like when you hear someone sing if you hear them hold a note that's them holding it when they're separating it that's the equivalent of almost tonguing a note on the tenor horn it's it's a good technique to use it's a technique that's used fairly often when playing um, and we're going to go over one of the techniques that maybe doesn't require it. Um, and obviously, holding notes, if you hold it and then play it so you can go... That was two held notes, but they were separated because I was tonguing them. Um, you can also kind of play it smooth. Like you can, Tonguing it is like separating the notes, detached and separated from each other. But then you can also kind of do it smooth, which is known as legato. Uh, and it's like a, it would just be like a, it's a lot lighter, and almost if you imagine this is your, um, if you imagine this is like your lips, your tongue's almost going like ta 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 ta. So if I do it again and you imagine that or try it yourself, you um, would get. Almost run out of air there. So yeah, you get the idea. And um, your tongue is almost ta 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 ta. And it's used for separating notes. And it's really, it's really useful. So that's what the tongue is used when it comes with buzzing. And obviously combining those together, that's the sound you get. Now Moving on 
we're going to add the mouthpiece now. So what we've just done is we've just practiced it a few times, we've gone over it, we've explained it, and hopefully you're a little bit familiar with it. If not, do not worry, you can always go back and watch it again. I'm completely happy with that. Do not think, um, you because you're not getting it, you're not doing good. You you like everyone goes at their own pace, and even if you're like managed to create a tiny sound, that's great. That's still a positive. So do not worry. But we're going to use the mouthpieces now, and we're going to use what we've just learned, and we're going to see how that is how it correlates with the mouthpiece. So if I do it without the mouthpiece and then do it with the mouthpiece, you'll notice it's the same thing, but we're just adding the mouthpiece to it. So if I, because I, I do this, it just kind of helps. You can also do it yourself and you can also remove it, but if you do it again, and if you see, you can see almost like my my cheeks are, they, like you, you can change the sound you play by almost tightening your lips as well and also kind of changing the shape as well with your cheeks and that. kind of You can kind of see it as I was doing it. Uh, and obviously, when you look at the diagram, you could almost kind of see the little line there that cor like correlates it. Oh yeah, there's like some movement there. There's some kind of uh, shape in there. Okay, without the mouthpiece, then with the mouthpiece, and you'll get to see the sound and the difference. So. Now with the mouthpiece. And there you go. It's almost like a duck call. Imagine it's a duck call and that's the sound you're trying to get. If you get that sound, you're doing it right. So use that. Use that as like your little like mental thought. Right. What am I trying to do to get the sound? I want to try and create a duck call like sound. And if you've got that sound, then what the, the buzzing of your lips is correct. You've done the technique right and you're just able to practice it now. It does take a bit of practice as well um, with the um, mouthpiece. But you can see, if I do it again, and I'll go to the side. So what I just did there is you saw my cheeks almost go like that. I kind of tightened my lips and my cheeks to create a higher pitch. And you can do the same with the instrument. I wouldn't recommend doing that straight away, but I just wanted to show it from the side so you can kind of see what was going on. So you can kind of see. You can kind of see tightening can, you know, tighten in your lips and tighten in almost like your cheeks as well. But mainly think about the lips. You tighten your lips um, and you can almost kind of see your shape changes. You can play higher note, but be careful when you do it because sometimes tightening your lips too much really hurts. I don't recommend tightening them too often. Sometimes I will do it to play higher notes, but when you tighten them too much and then you need, then need to play higher notes, you then can't play the notes at all. And I, I have struggled playing like A's, my, my, my G's and my A's, like high ones, because I've tightened my lips too hard and then I can't play it. And then you have to kind of take it back a bit and be like, right, you don't need to be that tight when playing those notes. Then when you play the notes with less strain on your lips, you play them fine. So that's something to keep in mind. Try not to tighten your lips too much when it comes to eventually playing higher pitches, but try to keep as relaxed as you can until you need to provide more support. And then you can maybe introduce the idea of maybe tightening your lips. Okay, lovely. That concludes the kind of that section with the mouthpiece. So now what we're gonna do is, well, it doesn't conclude it, it concludes understanding. Now we're gonna put it into practice a bit. So if we then move on to this side of the book, the sight and stuff, because there's a few images of probably a trumpet, I'd say, these go over the different ways you can play your notes. And obviously, I said I said I was going to go over these symbols, and I will. Do not worry; I will give a brief of what they mean because next week we're doing theory, and I'll be going over. Or the next lesson, as I should say, not next week, but next lesson will be theory. And these are different ways to play your notes using the technique we've just learned. 
and they're all effective. They all have their uniqueness in creating different sounds and making something sound very musical. So it's exciting and we're going to go straight into it. So I'll bring the diagram a bit closer. As you can see, I'll move my mouthpiece. You can see here um, that we've got three diagrams and these are the ones we're going to work on. Don't mind this one. That's just to, you know, I can always discuss it later. Um, so this, you've got a long note. So you can see that note again, almost with the same, that's the same one with the mouth and the mouthpiece. Um, and then you can then see we've got tongued notes, as I said, and that's three different notes, but they're all kind of getting played to like in a, like a segment, but they're all separate. And finally, we have slurring, and you can see it's almost one note going up to another and then down to another in one play. It sounds difficult. It is a little difficult, but do not worry. I'll show it off and we'll get to take our time with it. So, uh, I should probably use the book again. Right, little theory quickly. This is a minim. This is a crotchet. So, minim, crotchet. You can write these both down if you like. So, a minim is a note that is held for two beats. For two beats. And a crotchet is held for one beat. They're both notes in music that are used all the time. And they are not that they've got a value to them, and it's they've got a value that allows you to kind of play if you're playing in a time signature, for example, it adds up to a value. So three, four, you could have one minimum, one crotchet, that equals three. Two plus one is three. You've got three in that bar, you then move on to the next bar, and you can write something else. That's all we'll look at just now, but we'll go over that next lesson when we look at some music theory and we'll get to show it off which is perfect okay so the first one we saw long notes this one here i will do this just in case you'd like to maybe just have a quick look at it before we move on so we're going to do the long notes one first and this one is just holding the note for two or holding it for long as it says and i'm going to show it on the instrument so I'm going to do it without the instrument, although what I'll do, without the instrument, with the mouthpiece, with the instrument. It'd be a good way to show it and build in it. So, a long note, it's the same technique, there's nothing different, so it's just the, uh, you know, buzzing of the lips, and then you can all, and then you don't really need to use your tongue too much here, but if I do it just now. <laughs> there we go. Then we do it with the mouthpiece. And then, while the instrument, we're going to do G, which is open. And F. And there you go. That's a long note. Um, you get those quite a lot again in music. All these techniques or ways of playing, uh, or how you see it, are something you'll see in music all the time. So that's a long note, and it's just, you know, you hold that note for its full value and for its name. So obviously it's a minimum, and it's held for two, so you want to hold it for two and give it its full value. Um, make sure you give yourself plenty of air. This can be quite tiring, and make sure you maybe have a little, you know, you have some water with you, just in case, um, because it can be quite tiring. Okay, tongued notes. So that one was the one with the crotch. And what I'll do is I'll just put it into frame a little bit so you can kind of see. There you go. Um, so a crotch held for one, but there's three crotches there. So there's three beats in total there. Now, how do we do that? With using your tongue. So you use your technique that we've learned and then you also then use your tongue to kind of space the notes out and give them each their name and their value. And I'll give the example just now of how that would sound if we were to tongue these notes. So, again, your technique. You hear it again. You hear the spacing with the mouthpiece. And again. 
you can hear that spacing um, with using your tongue. Now we'll do it with the instrument. I'm going to do G and then I'm going to do F. Remember, G is open, F is first, just in case. And now let's give it a go. There you go. So that's how it would sound. Obviously, I held that G on for a little bit longer at the end, but that's how it sounds. It's the da, 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 or ta, ta, ta. You can hear the separation of each note, and that's what we're trying to get. So great. The final one. This one could be really nice. So I'm going to do um, a little segment, but this one will be challenging. So with the, it's the same technique as the first one, the long note, but you want more air because you're going to be playing multiple notes and holding them for like a longer value time. So for this example, it's six beats because um, there's three minims tied, uh, slurred together, which would be represented with a note going with a line, going up to another one and another line going down to another one. So what I'm going to do is I'll use my mouth Obviously, I can only just do the the normal technique we have been learning. So, oh, that was not great. <laughs> Let's try again. It's obviously sometimes difficult uh, doing it. Um, so, yeah, with that, then with the mouthpiece, it would just be... Okay, and then if I apply a note, it will sound a lot better, but it's the same technique as the first one, except you need a lot of air and support because you're going to be holding it for a lot longer. So let's do, I'm going to do F, then I'm going to do C up to G, back down to C. Then I'll do a little segment for each to show them off. So this is how it would sound, slurring. <laughs> So you can hear there was no separation there and I that was all the air I had used that I gathered, used that all for that one little segment and that's what slurn is. Um, it's challenging but it's really nice. If I play a little segment, slurn a few notes, you'll get to hear it. And if you add dynamics to it as well, you could get this. There you go. Can be really effective and can be really pretty. The same with tongued notes. If you have a nice little segment, you can, you know. And then along. There you go. That's all the techniques. Uh, so you've got your long note, you've got your tongued notes, and you've got your slurred. And these are all things that get used with the tenor horn. Now, why do we use those? Well, you use those to get pieces like jaws. So that's what the thing was at the bottom. It's a little thing of notes, but with little sounds. So, jaws theme. Raiders March, Indiana Jones, you've got Pirates of the Caribbean, and you've got other films. So you know, you know, those are pieces that are using long notes, tongued notes, and slurring notes with the use of dynamics and like the use of like music theory creates those pieces. And those pieces are, you know, everyone knows them or might know them, and they're really, really good pieces. Um, and they all use those techniques that we've just learned. And brass players that play those pieces will use the same technique because it's you know it's a universal technique that's used with brass. And it's really great, it's great. Makes some amazing music with it. So um, those techniques are very important and they're very useful. And you'll hopefully get to see them 
throughout our lessons when we get to maybe future lessons and we're maybe playing a piece or we're playing a scale and we're using those techniques and there will be intermediate lessons which may go over some more advanced pieces you know you get to hear them there definitely um but yeah that is today's lesson um we went over the mouthpiece and we've just gone over those techniques and we've used the diagram and they've been super helpful and um, next lesson will be theory uh, i hope you're looking forward to that so we get to kind of see what we're discussing and why what i'm playing and like how it's written on music notation and like how it's written down um I really hope this lesson's been useful. I hope you can go back and maybe watch something else and find something else useful. Or if you want to have a practice, you can always go back and watch a different section. Um, but I really hope you found it useful. Again, the book, amazing book, recommend it. Cannot recommend it enough if you're going to start brass. But if not, I hope you found something interesting today. Um, as always, that's what my hope is, is either to learn something and hopefully understand it or find something interesting, to be honest that's the goal well it's been joshua this has been inside the music i hope you had a great day hope you had a good lesson and i hope to see you in the next lesson